Hello and welcome to another edition of Reimagining Law. I'm Mark Palmer with the Illinois Supreme Court Commission on Professionalism. Today we're posed to examine the opportunities of small firms and solos who are willing to take the lead in innovating their service delivery models, especially post COVID-19. And just to set the stage for discussion, I recently uh, saw the release 2020 State of the US Law Firms uh, survey done by Thomson Reuters. And among the many takeaways there of the survey of over 400 small firms across the US uh, conducted in April and May of, of 2020, in the early stages of the pandemic, we find that small firm attorneys are continuing to report that they spend way too much time on administrative tasks rather than practicing law, as one example, as 74% still say. So I wanna start changing that and embracing some efficiencies. And with me today to guide us through starting that conversation, I have the pleasure of, of having Melanie Leonard, she's from Streamline Legal, and Brian Sims from Sims Law Firm. Thanks both of you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Mark. Yeah, Melanie, let's start with you. I know you've practiced law for many years before you've transitioned into practice management consulting for attorneys. Uh, how, how has COVID-19 changed the way attorneys work and, and what's working, what isn't? That's a great question. So from what I've seen over the last six months or so, attorneys have really been forced to consider their firms as more flexible, you know, being able to practice remotely, being able to practice with teams that are spread out, you know, so when we're talking about attorneys that have had challenges in the past and letting go of administrative stuff, well, that was a challenge when you were in the office. Now your team is spread out to some extent. And, you know, even if some people are back in the office or some people aren't, now it's just that much harder for you to focus on the idea of taking things off of your plate and handing things to other team members. So what I found has worked really well is firms that have focused on distributing their work very carefully. So it's a com combination of communication and processes and procedures. So if we build a procedure that says, we're gonna get this work out to this person and this person's gonna do that, and we're communicating that all very well, those are the firms that I've seen succeeding the most. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting point of like, even if you have the great processes in line, if you're not communicating, you lost that value, right? Exactly. Yeah, anything to add there, Brian? Well, I think one of the great things uh, that uh, people have found during this pandemic is, uh, the use of uh, programs like Microsoft Teams or uh, Zoom or other things like that, where they realize that there are these communication devices that they can use within their firm that aren't complicated to use. You don't have to be an IT expert to set them up as long as you're using them within your organization. It's very easy to set them up, set up groups, and uh, stay in touch with each other, even if you're not in the same office. Yeah, and, and Brian, you've practiced law for uh, over 20 years and over a decade as a solo in your own firm. Um, you've always been involved with legal tech. Uh, many of us know you from the ABA Tech Show, among many other places. How can attorneys embrace technology? What, how can they make this pandemic specifically be the turning point to, to really pulling the trigger? I think this is a real opportunity to focus on uh, sort of the drum I've been beating for a long time, which is making your uh, practice location independent, which basically means you can work wherever you happen to be as long as you've got your computer and generally a connection to the internet. And this is a real opportunity for that because I think people are seeing now that it is possible to work from home or away from the office and get work done. And so there are some keys to that. Primarily, you have to uh, do what people like to call paperless. I prefer to think of it as you're converting your file to a digital file because we all still have paper. We can't get rid of that. But that uh, if all of your files are electronic, then you can carry them around easily all of them and everybody in the office can have all of them at the same time. And then the second aspect of that is uh, leveraging the cloud so that uh, you don't all have to be in the office connected to the server to access your documents. If they're stored in the cloud and they're all electronic, uh, you can each be at your own home or at the office or any combination thereof and everybody can still get all of their work done because they can access all of the documents. Yeah, and that transitions perfectly to what I wanted to bring up next was 
you know, many of those solo small firm practitioners that are watching this, they want to know what are the simple steps? What can I do to change complaining about in that Rutgers survey, Thomson Reuters survey, excuse me, was how do we invest in technology, but how can we pull that trigger now? And what are some of those simple steps to increase internal efficiencies within the office and therefore more efficiency should equate to more revenues and more time to actually practice law. Uh, Melanie, what do you have to say? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's funny. People look at the different technology out there and admittedly, there's a lot of choices, right? I mean, whether you're talking about a communication tool or a project management tool, I mean, there's a ton of options. And so it's very easy to get overwhelmed. I encourage people to start by just taking a step back forget about the technology and the shiny objects for a minute, focus on what is it we need to accomplish. We need to communicate with our team or we need to keep track of our files or we need to you know, make out list of your priorities. Once you do that, now you can go to the software and say, well, does it do this? Does it do that? And make a little checkbox. And so if you find a software that checks off all those boxes, jump on it, go for it, you know, and don't be afraid of the technology because it's the idea is that it's going to accomplish exactly what you set out to do because you did that analysis on the front end. So Brian, you mentioned a couple tools right out of the gate. If I'm that attorney, is it, is it a fear of technology that's keeping me away? And, and what are some really simple things that I can say, even if you uh, have trouble turning on your computer, what's something that that attorney can say, you can start doing this today to work smarter and faster and better? And so the first thing I would say, and I, I've said this many times before, and this goes back to what I just said, and I hate to repeat it, but going paperless, uh, digitizing your file is the uh, best thing, single best thing you can do to improve the efficiency in your office. And fortunately, the technology today to do this is relatively inexpensive and easy to use. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're one of those low tech attorneys uh, who doesn't feel real comfortable working on your computer, you can find somebody in your office to hook a scanner up to your computer and start scanning documents in and learning how to use them. I find that uh, a lot of people like to complain about how difficult it is to read documents on their computer. And when I talk to them further, it turns out they're using, you know, the, the monitor on a small laptop or this, you know, 15 inch monitor they bought 10 years ago and they haven't uh, upgraded since. And if you go out, monitors are cheap. I mean, in today's dollars, monitors are almost disposable. Uh, the last ones I got were under $100 a piece, and they're like 23-inch monitors. Uh, go out, buy uh, either multiple or a single really big monitor for some of those people. Uh, we're all getting a little older. You get the larger monitor, you can blow the documents up. I find it actually now a lot easier to read documents uh, and PDF on my computer because I can blow them up to 200 or 300 percent and read them rather than uh, trying to figure out what they say on paper. So I think uh, going that extra step, getting more and bigger and better monitors is the first step to really making people comfortable with uh, getting used to uh, spending more time in front of their computer than in front of paper. I want to bring up uh... A big uh, to do with many attorneys, and that's of course timekeeping and billing. Um, we don't like to do it, but it's an absolute necessity in our practice in the private sector, and it certainly shouldn't start at the end of a case. What are some some steps we can do to improve the billing process? And all are these alternative billing solutions part of that process? Um, what do you say? Yeah, generally, I'm a big fan of alternative billing solutions. I think that especially if you're looking at things like subscription based or flat fees, these are things that are very predictable for clients and clients appreciate that and they want that. And so I think that definitely I would encourage you guys to start looking at that kind of idea. Um, on a more immediate basis, I would also look at some technology. Um, there's software out there, just to name a few, WiseTime, Chrometa, that will actually track things you're doing on your computer for you. So at the end of the day, now you've got a list of everything you've done and you can determine what you want to bill for. It integrates with a lot of practice management software 
software. Um, so that's something that I find really helpful because it's the little things, right? Like you remember the three days you spent in trial and that's going to get on the bill, right? But a lot of times we forget the phone call the emails, the smaller conversations, those are the kind of things that slip through the cracks. And so if you have this technology there reminding you, hey, this is what you did, this is what happened, then it's very easy to go and just, you know, put those right onto a bill. So that's what I would look at. Um, but with respect to billing and with respect to efficiency, just start with documenting things, whether you're documenting your time or documenting things to do. The sooner you get it out of your head, the easier it's going to be for you to start passing that on to other administrative staff. If they have to ask you 100 questions to be helpful at all, that's not very helpful. Brian, what do you want to add? I would just emphasize that need uh, for good timekeeping. If you can do alternative billing arrangements in your practice area, absolutely do that. I know in the practice areas where I can do that, my, my clients are happier, I'm happier because I know exactly what that stream of income is, but there are some. I do some litigation that doesn't necessarily always work well, and there are studies out there that show that uh, as humans, we're terrible at keeping track of time. Like that's just, that's a fact. So you need software to do that. And whether you're using something like Chrometa or Wifetime or Harvest or something where you're doing it uh, that way, or you're using one of the many time and billing software solutions that are out there, you have to use something that tracks your time contemporaneously and uh, not trying to recreate that at the end of the day or the end of the week or the end of the month because that just doesn't work for anyone. It's not good for you. It's not fair to your clients. Um, you're going to lose money on some uh, some instances and you're going to be overbilling uh, clients and others. So find something that allows you to track your time contemporaneously. You can uh, try doing that on paper. I think the timers that are built into uh, the time and billing software that's available are the way to go. And there are a bunch of options available for that that uh, are relatively inexpensive and affordable in just about every practice situation if, uh, if that's something you don't already have. Well, that's great. We, well, we've, we've talked about various ways to increase internal efficiencies, uh, both processes and technology, uh, to make you happier, to make your clients happier. Um, lastly, let's wrap up this conversation. I just want to hear any other general concepts of how attorneys can invest in their firm, invest in their business to make a better product, a better delivery of legal services. What recommendations do you have to, to give us? Brian, let's start with you. So what I like to uh, suggest to people is first figure out where your, uh, I like to call them pinch points or where your problems are. Where is it in your office that things slow down or stop or don't get accomplished so what, and then figure out what's causing that. And a lot of times uh, what we find out is that it's not a piece of technology that we need uh, to fix whatever's going on, but our system is broken. Um, the reality is, is that we have a system for everything. It's just most of them uh, aren't very good because we've never thought about uh, how they work. So you need to investigate that. And if the problem is getting, I mean, it could be as simple as making sure that all the documents that uh, are received are delivered to the right people in the firm. You can have a system for that. Somebody is in charge of that, uh, whether that's emailed or done through a practice management system or whatever. But you need to think about that. Figure out where those pinch points are. Where is it that all of your work is grinding to a halt and not getting done? And then you have to analyze that. There may be a technological solution for that. There may not be. But that's the re where the real efficiencies are to be gained is figure that out. And then, as Melanie said earlier, once you know what your, your problem is and how to solve it, then you can figure out, is there a piece of technology out there that will help me? Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, marketing is very important, but I feel like there's a lot of great marketing opportunities that are not necessarily expensive. And so I feel like if we're talking about money, I would first start looking at the processes, make sure that you have good systems in place as fundamentals, and then start looking at software that's going to help you carry those out even more efficiently. Great. Well, thank you so much to both of you for sharing your knowledge and experience and, and hopefully helping all of you, the, the viewers of this video, to make your firm and, and, and organizations work better, more efficient, smarter, not harder. 
Um, please like and share this video for others who may benefit. Subscribe to the Commission's channel to keep up to date for the newest episodes. You'll find more information in the description below. Thank you for watching and be well.